Breaking news alert, a crazy and dramatic scene outside a Cordova ice cream store. Look here, you can see from Chopper 5, two cars crashed one into a tree, the other into those picnic tables there. The crash was at the Baskin Robbins on North Germantown Parkway. And WMC Action News 5's Tiffany Neely joins us live from the store with what witnesses say happened. Tiffany? Joe, I'm here at the Baskin Robbins right off North Germantown Parkway. And if you look behind me, you can see the mangled remains of this patio furniture and employees at the Baskin Robbins just trying to clean this whole mess up. So this is what employees tell me happened. They say a woman ran off North Germantown Parkway into oncoming traffic before hitting an SUV parked at the ice cream shop with people inside eating ice cream. When she hit the car, employees said it went airborne flipping before landing on the patio furniture. But thankfully, employees say no one was taken to the hospital, but some customers are calling this a miracle. If it wasn't so hot, I know people would hang out there all the time, like little small children. Yeah, and we're still working to find out exactly why the woman did careen off into that patio furniture. And we'll have more for you on that here on Action News 5. For now, reporting in Cordova, Tiffany Neely, WMC Action News 5. Breaking news alert, at least one person has been taken to the hospital after a possible active shooter in downtown Colorado started pulling a trigger. Officers responded to a business in a busy part of downtown Denver after a report of a gunman firing shot. Several streets in the area were blocked off, as you can see. Police have yet to release any details about the injured person and say it was not immediately clear if the gunman was in custody. And breaking news alert, officials say two attackers have set off bombs at the Istanbul airport. At least 28 people are dead, some 60 injured. This according to CNN. Chaos erupting at the Europe's third busiest airport after two explosions and then gunfire. In this video, you can see crowds of travelers crouching down in fear on some grass outside the airport. Investigators say two suspects were at the international terminal entrance and they set these bombs off before going into the x-ray security check. Turkey has suffered several bombings in recent months linked to Kurdish or Islamic State group militants. Officials have shut down the Istanbul airport as they work to get control of this situation. A couple both close to 90 years old forced to the ground and robbed inside their own home. Neighbors say that the husband was just fixing his front door when he was attacked. Neighbors also say that crime is becoming too common in their Fox Meadows neighborhood. WMC Action News 5's Rose Eckler is on Egan Drive with surveillance video that could help catch those suspects. Yeah, neighbors in this area are fearing their safety after an 86 and 87 year old couple were robbed in a home invasion. Now, neighbors tell me the couple is doing OK, but they can't believe what happened. At around 10 on Tuesday morning, Memphis police were called to this home on Egan Drive for a home invasion. A couple in their 80s were robbed by two men who fled the scene. The men threatened the victims with a weapon. He was fixing the door. So the door was open. He was getting his tools and his wife was cooking. 10 year old Salami Vieta lives next door to the couple and says she calls them grandma and grandpa. Vieta went into the couple's home while police were on scene to check on them. Her family also gave police this surveillance video showing a black truck passing the neighbor's home over and over just minutes before they were robbed. Vieta says the man now has a large cut on his head where he was hit and knocked down by the robbers. Man told the woman, if he moves, then you get killed. If the, if the man moves, then the woman gets killed. Words that she said hurt to hear the couple say. But what hurts the most is the memories this brings. Just three weeks ago, Vieta's home was broken into. Her televisions, computers, and mother's jewelries were stolen. And just days after that, her father's truck was taken. Memphis is not a good place no more. Now, neighbors on the streets say they're scared of the recent increase in violence. But this neighbor, who is too scared to show her face, says she won't stop fighting until they get their neighborhood back. I'm not moving. They're not going to chase me out. So we're going to have to put them away for a long, long time. 
Now neighbors tell me something needs to be done to keep them safe. Reporting on Egan Drive, Rose Eckler, WMC Action News 5. Andrew Kozak here. We have been looking at a mostly sunny afternoon and then the clouds. Well, they're starting to creep up and see the high cloud tops, those real puffy cumulus clouds. They are part of some thunderstorms that are moving from the north to the south and on our First alert Viper. We're actually starting to see them right now. 94 in the city of Memphis, 80 in Blyville. Why the change? Well, we have some rain. There's not a whole lot of thunder here, but what we are seeing a couple of downpours, a few areas like Troy over toward New Bern and down over toward the Dyersburg area. This is where we're looking at the most intense part of the storm. Nothing severe at this point, but maybe 30 to 40 mile per hour winds and some heavy downpours as this continues to move to the south. Tonight we'll have temperatures down into the upper 60s and low 70s. I'll be tracking some of those storms. Plus, we're going to be talking about your 4th of July holiday forecast all coming up in just a couple of minutes. A woman walking home on Poplar Avenue says she was kidnapped at knife point. Police say that she was in a van for six miles before she jumped from that van on I-55 at E.H. Crump Boulevard. WMC Action News 5's Sasha Jones tells us what happened during that frightening ride. A morning walk home ended with a violent ordeal for one woman, according to Memphis police. Here at Poplar and Hollywood is where a woman told police she was walking while she was talking on the phone when a man in a silver van tried talking to her. Before long, police say the man whipped out a knife and forced the woman inside of the van, throwing her phone and Bluetooth out of the window as the van pulled off. We have uh, stay inside the building until I ride home. So therefore they can watch us until our ride comes. This woman told us this kidnapping hits close to home. Just this morning, she says her coworker was almost a victim too. She says her coworker was shaken after she told her a man tried to get her into a car near the Shelby County Board of Education building. She was telling us that it was a car trying to come by and snitch her up. She says that attempted kidnapping happened just minutes apart from when police say the woman was taken in the silver van. I try to catch the bus every day, so I'd be scared for my life about me almost getting abducted, but I don't want that to happen. Police say the kidnapped woman was able to escape by jumping from the moving van on I-55 near the E.H. Crump exit ramp. For those walking to and from work, this is a story of caution. Watch the man. They should watch the man. Police told us the woman was able to flag down motorists who then called the police. They told us she was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. They're still looking for the person responsible for this crime. If you have any information, you are urged to call the Memphis Police Department. In Memphis, Sasha Jones, WMC Action News 5. Police are now investigating the city's 112th homicide. Police were called to the 4900 block of Shelter Cove around 5 this morning. The victim was shot in that area, but went to the home on Shelter Cove to find help. Now, the victim, who has not been identified, was taken to Regional 1, where he died. No suspect information has been released. A 27-year-old man has been arrested and charged with stealing tools from a tree service company. According to a police report, Keith on Owens broke into three woodland tree service trucks in May. Police say Owens cut through a fence and took three toolboxes worth more than $57,000. Police say Owens was caught after he pawned some of the equipment. And now to the story that's just broken so many of our hearts across the Mid-South. One of the greatest basketball coaches of all time, a Tennessee legend, has died. Pat Summit, the all-time winningest basketball coach in major college basketball history, lost her battle to Alzheimer's disease early this morning. Jason Miles joins us from the Alert Center with reaction to Pat Summit's death. Jay Sad news indeed, Joe. Fans have been placing flowers, cards, balloons, and even basketballs at the foot of Pat Summit's statue on the Tennessee campus. You see the video here behind me. Summit had an outstanding career, as you mentioned, and it all started when she was just 22 years old when she was named head coach at the University of Tennessee. Every possession matters. Take white pride in every possession. It's a game of possessions. It's also a game of wheels. See how tough we are. This Pat Summit coached the Lady Vols for 38 years, winning nearly 1,100 games, making her the all-time winningest Division I basketball coach, male or female. 
Known for her intense glare on the sidelines, Summit led the Lady Vols to eight NCAA national championships. I don't think there are enough words to obviously um, cover all that Pat has done for women's basketball, um, for all of us individual players. Um, I mean, we all could sit around and talk about her and share funny stories. Summit was an Olympic champion, winning a silver medal as a player and then gold as the coach of the 1984 national team. She was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in the year 2000. After being diagnosed with early onset dementia in 2011, Summit played a leading role in the fight against Alzheimer's. In 2012, Summit was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Obama. Today, the president released a statement saying in part, quote, Pat was a patriot who earned Olympic medals for America as a player and a coach, and I was honored to award her the Presidential Medal of Freedom. She was a proud Tennessean. And the court where the basketball team's play is already named the Summit, a tribute to a woman who impacted thousands of student athletes, Pat Summit, was 64 years old. For the 32nd year, the Mississippi Lions All-State Band has been named international champions. We are sending a high five to the band that won the competition this year in Japan. The band has been winning this competition almost yearly since 1951. The 146-member band is made up of the state's most talented high school band members and dancers. Next at 5, improving preschool. We need 70, 80, 90 percent of our third graders reading at third grade level. The plan to get more kids in Memphis and Shelby County early education. A couple of thunderstorms across the area, but the heat and humidity is going to subside for a couple of days. Stay with us. Your forecast is on its way. Plus, trials for the Olympic Games are in full swing. The Memphian who will compete tonight in hopes of going to Rio. Thanks for watching WMC Action News 5 at 5, the number one 5 p.m. newscast in the Mid-South. Providing the tools to make little brains excel, that was the theme behind a pre-K summit today discussing the current state of preschool programs in Memphis and Shelby County. WMC Action News 5's Kendall Kirkham has more on the strides and challenges for the future. Tuesday morning's pre-K summit highlighted the $70 million federal preschool development grant awarded to Tennessee a little more than a year ago. It's split between Nashville Public Schools and Shelby County's pre-K consortium, which includes Millington Municipal and Bartlett City Schools, Shelby County Schools, and the Achievement School District. Because we have families in our community who have lots of challenges, and they really need that support for their children, socially, emotionally, academically. Among the attendees, U.S. Congressman Steve Cohen, Tennessee Representative Mark White and Memphis and Shelby County Mayors Jim Strickland and Mark Luttrell. One of the main reasons behind this summit today is to talk about the reading level of students here in Shelby County and hopefully this new grant money will help do just that. We need 70, 80, 90 percent of our third graders reading at third grade level instead of 30 percent or so right now. The grant has made strides by adding classes, providing transitional camps in the summer, and more technology. Dr. Deanna McClendon, director of early child programs for SES, says the improvements have already started to pay off. When we did some early kindergarten testing last year, uh, when school started, it seemed as though the percentage of students who had participated in pre-K were also the percentage of students who were proficient on their first benchmark in kindergarten. Small strides helping grow big brains. Kendall Kirkup, WMC Action News 5. Tennessee and Mississippi have reached settlements with Volkswagen and all VW is agreeing to pay nearly $15 billion in settlements for their admissions scandal, emissions scandal, I should say. Tennessee will get $570 million, Mississippi just $2.5 million. The automaker admitted to selling about 11 million cars with software designed to cheat emissions tests. More than 1,000 vehicles in Mississippi are covered in this settlement. The deal includes repairing or buying back cars with owners getting as much as $10,000. A Mississippi man has died after being struck by lightning. 
Charles Wharton was killed last night after he was struck by lightning in Lamar County. That is South Mississippi. Officials say that Wharton and his cousin were standing under the carport when the lightning struck the ground near that pole there. Lamar County emergency management officials say the storm was roughly 10 miles away when that strike happened. Well, we have many friends to our north up in Dunklin and Pemiscott counties in the Missouri Boot Heel. Kennett and Carothersville are the county seats of those communities, and they're getting wet. Yeah, we're actually hearing a little bit of thunderstorm damage, too, and none of these storms have had warnings on them. They're not severe, but 30, 40-mile-per-hour winds, heavy rain, and maybe some pita marble-sized hail. It's what we're seeing out there this afternoon. Meanwhile, we're mostly sunny here in Memphis. A little piece of energy left over as that front has moved to the south, and that's what we're starting with this afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Let's walk over to the wall and you can see that with that massive area of low pressure in that front now all the heat humidity down to the south staying there meantime it's hot but it's relatively dry here in Memphis but we're still watching for some of those thunderstorms and as Joe mentioned Boot Hill and areas just to the north of us are experiencing the best chances for those thunderstorms and I can tell you some good news a lot of this green was red a little earlier and that means that we're starting to see these storms well weaken in both coverage area and intensity but I'm going to track the storm that's near Dyersburg for you because right now it is packing a wallop with 30 to 40 mile per hour winds. And as that continues to move south and southeast, we're going to be looking at more receding in about 29 minutes. South Dyersburg, you're pretty much getting the storm right now. And as we take a look toward uh, Bell Eagle in about 43 minutes, I do think that as this continues to move to the south, it will continue to weaken. But there's the big picture. Not a lot of folks are seeing anything but a few showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder. Nashville actually has a severe thunderstorm warning. Looks like the east side will have the worst or best chances, I should say, for those showers and thunderstorms. In the meantime, what we're seeing for us is mostly sunny skies across the Memphis area, and we have temperatures that are in the mid-90s. 94 degrees in Memphis, Tunica 90 degrees, 93 Holly Springs, Bolivar around 90, Corinth 91. Obviously, the rain-cooled air to the north keeping temperatures a little bit cooler. Blytheville 80 feels like 82. Now, the rest of us feel like a few degrees warmer than we actually are, but remember, 96 is what it feels like. 94 is the actual temperature. Humidities are down there in the upper 30s to near 40, so it's not nearly as bad as it has been. And the next few days, not only will the humidity decrease, but the rain chances are pretty much null as well. By the weekend, we start to increase that a little bit, and I'll show you that on the seven-day plan. But here's the general rule this week. Humidity to the south continues to move to the south. High pressure builds and moves in from the north, and with those clockwise winds and a little bit of that northeast flow, not as humid and you're going to feel it in the air both today, tomorrow and even as we head into Thursday. So just downright pleasant the next couple of days, although we'll stay around 90 by Friday. Humidity starts to creep up and then as we head into the weekend, yep, you'll notice a few showers and storms. So a mild start bright and sunny tomorrow morning, 74. We should bottom out around 72 overnight and then your Wednesday will end up warming up pretty quickly, but we're going to top off around 90 tomorrow. Five o'clock temperature 90, partly cloudy skies, not nearly as humid. Friday humidity back into play around 90 then and then over the weekend a few showers and thunderstorms in spots here or there Saturday Sunday and Monday of course for Independence Day a lot of folks are going to be celebrating I would not cancel plans but just keep in mind you will have to dodge a couple of storms here and there so you may get out there at 10 o'clock in the morning have a pool party and then by two o'clock run back in remember if you see lightning you hear thunder get inside but chances are next week and the weekend you'll just have to get inside for a little bit our folks in Dyersburg are doing that right now yeah absolutely all right thanks Andrew Tonight Tonight at 6, pay incentives for police officers. Why the MPD could see bonuses and raises coming their way. Plus, golf theft. How the Memphis City Attorney, City Council Attorney rather, got his golf cart and club stolen and what he did to try to get his property back. Do you have a story tip? Call the WMC Action News 5 investigators at 866-518-9082. Tonight, a Memphian could qualify for the 2016 Olympics in Rio. Pace Clark attends the University of Georgia, but is from Memphis. He is ranked ninth going into the men's 200-meter butterfly. You can watch his qualifications tonight on NBC Sports. That's right. Tonight, Michael Phelps, who you saw there, will get back into the pool to try and qualify for his fifth Olympics team. I'm happy to get the first one under the way and, and looking forward to tonight. Well, all right then. It's uh, an exciting time for 
the Olympic Games. More than 14,000 fans will pack the arena tonight cheering for the swimming legend. Phelps swims in the finals of the 200-meter fly tonight. A first or second place finish will secure his place on the U.S. Olympic team. You can watch Phelps swim tonight at 7 right here on WMC Action News 5. And don't forget, WMC Action News 5 is your home for the Rio Summer Games. We have a category dedicated to the Olympics on our website, WMCActionNews5.com. The opening ceremony set for Friday, August 5th. Good afternoon. Ahead for us, our Richard Engel will be live from Istanbul Airport with the latest on tonight's deadly terror attack there. We have new details of the consulate attack in Benghazi, Libya, from a House committee finally ending its investigation and pointing to government failures. And why a medical exam routinely performed on millions of women is now being reconsidered when we see you back here for Nightly News. While we won't have severe weather right now, a 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gust or an outflow boundary should hit the northern areas of Shelby County by 545. Gusty winds, maybe some brief heavy rain, thunder and lightning by 6 o'clock. I'll be tracking this on Facebook, on Twitter, and have an update coming up at 6. All right, thank you, Andrew. We'll look forward to that report tonight at 6 o'clock. Also, we'll reflect back on the life of Pat Head Summit, the incredible coach at UT, and the latest from Istanbul coming up right now on NBC Nightly News. With the WMC Action News 5 mobile app, you'll be the first to know. From WMCActionNews5.com to text and email alerts for breaking news and weather, it's all right here in the palm of your hand. Sponsored by the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail.